With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Welcome back to the post-game of Let's Play Inazuma 11 3 Team Ogre Attacks. This episode was actually a fan-requested episode, which I wasn't even originally planning to do. But Shadow AK asked me to do tournament match mode in the post-game, and you guys backed, me, backed him up on that, said you wanted it, so here we are. Now, I did cover tournament match mode already, all the way back in part 10. But stuff's changed since then, so I'm going to speak to the top tips guy and make that clear. So, top tournament tip number one. The rank of tournament and levels of the teams are based on your own team's level. And so, I think that becomes immediately obvious what the main difference is. When we first did this, it was part 10 of the Let's Play. It's now part 66. They're going to be a lot tougher now. My team is around level 64 at the moment. Top tournament tip numero 2. Wins mean prizes, and prizes you win depend on the tournament ranking. Yuppie! And when you consider back in part 10, we got the special move Slingshot from the similarly Spanish Red Matador. What are we going to get now? Top tournament tip numero 3. You can save your favorite tournaments and play them again later. And I, I did do that with the last one, but I'm never touching it again. But the point is, if you save a tournament with a good reward, you can do it again and farm for that same reward. It, it helps. Top tournament tip numero quattro. You can share tournaments with friends using Street Pass Challenge. Genial, non? Uh, too bad Ace Two Shoes already left. Can't really do that now. And it's easier if you save the tournament but anyway so that's the rundown we are now gonna get into a post game tournament it's not even necessarily a post game feature if I go on current tournaments you can see the old one that I saved back in part 10 I'm not gonna be doing that one again we're gonna go on a new tournament and this one has some interesting teams indeed Forest team is going to be the first opponent, but I just saw the team level as well. These things are supposed to be based upon your own team level. Why would they give me a level 70 team right off the bat? When I said I was level 64, that was a slip of the tongue. I meant to say 54, and it actually turns out I'm 53. But nonetheless... They're going to call it Fuji Forest Formation. Might as well go over the bios for Forest Team. A couple of these guys appeared in the Street Pass episode, funnily enough, because Ace Two Shoes put a lot of these guys on his team. Forest Team is one of my favorite teams in Inazuma 11 because it was such a hidden feature in the second Inazuma 11 game. You had to go through the whole post-game story with Diamond Dust or Prominence, depending on your version, where you had to go all the way to the end of Fuji Forest and then battle them at the end of the maze. And if you put yourself through all that trauma for a second time, then you would be rewarded by an opportunity of fo the opportunity to face Forest Team, who genuinely wanted to eat you. And I may well have been the first person on YouTube to cover it, to be honest, because I couldn't find any others. And it's definitely one of the most viewed episodes of the Let's Play. And uh, rightfully so, really, because Forest Team, they've all just got such wonderful designs. I really love them. And I'm, I never expected them to be in this Let's Play at all. You couldn't even recruit them in the second game. But here in Inazuma 11.3, they are available just through random capsule scouting. And did you notice something else troubling about what we just saw? Yeah, why did you kick it off the field? This is my chance to get a, a goal with Axel, I suppose. Let's go for a throw in. Heat tackle to keep it. Nah, never mind. Yes, when the goalkeeper used God Hand, he did not lose any TP whatsoever. And that's, I think, going to be a running theme across all of the matches in this tournament. They are hardcore, where they can't even... No, no, I wanted to get as close as possible. Of course they've got ambush. That makes too much sense. Uh, I wanted to get as close as possible to ensure that I could get the, the ball in, because I'm clearly under-leveled for this match. But if I leveled up more, 
then wouldn't the tournaments get higher leveled as well? There's not really much you can do. You're gonna have to risk it with Caleb Stonewall. They fired up. Do I fire up just to give myself a chance? I think I will wait until later into the match to do that and try to secure an ultimate advantage over them. But yeah, so if I were able to defeat this tournament, no doubt the reward would be absolutely wonderful. But he's got proxy on net, so that's going to save it. If he can stop the ball with God Hand, one of the weakest saves in the game, then I didn't really give myself much of a chance against a fired up proxy on net. But we're going to try anyway, because I would really like to be able to get to the second round. If, I mean, if I'm going to lose to anyone, I guess it might as well be Forest Team, one of my favourite teams in the whole game, but... We saw that this was kind of an Inazuma 11 2 themed tournament in general, where pretty much all of the alias teams were in there, including the robot guards. Like, that's how far back they were reaching. They would actually have the robot guards from Alias Academy HQ as a team in this tournament, who, again, we would never face, except for probably in an extra competition route. But that's another thing that I get to exclusively show to you all as part of this mode, which is nice enough. It's just a pity that the reality is starting to set in that this might be a step too far to complete. And if you want to see someone actually win a tournament, then maybe going back to part 10 was the true way to go. You can't even use... What the?! We're going to run with this. I'm watching the replay. The goalkeeper was stood behind the line. So he couldn't even attempt to save the ball. And suddenly we have an incredibly tense match here. Because even if I can't win the final, I am determined to beat Forest Team. And then face the team afterwards. Um, let's change some players. Axel Blaze's kickstart is 69, so that is the most power we have to put out. Oh, I, ke I kept Sean Frost on. I was intending to take him off, but I guess I just switched his places with somebody. But, you know, this Let's Play has genuinely had a lot of matches which were far more tense than I ever imagined. Not really in the main story, but that Street Pass episode I recorded with Ace Two Shoes where I used his underleveled team to make on my incredibly competent one. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, it's over. I needed to fire up. He's using a competent move as well. Oh no. Why have they got numbers on the back of their uniform? Shot blocking. I, I was trying to keep it secret that this guy was ever on my team. He was supposed to just kind of be a background detail that you were never meant to notice, but I really needed a defender after Hurley Kane got out of TP. They don't even have a goal sound. I can't believe that. It was 29 minutes when they took the ball off me. They shouldn't have been allowed to have a shot. Oh, I thought I was gonna win this and now it's 1-1 again. Ugh. Nonetheless, we'll press on. Maybe I can just get lucky with a long shot again. See, all of the past really tense matches, like the Street Pass one, and other ones I've done in my own time, like a narrow 1-0 win over Fallen Zeus in the original game, on the Nintendo eShop version, I, I at least still managed to win. It's like the, the super post-game match of the Inazuma 11 Go Chrono Stones as well. That was a narrow 1-0 win where I cheesed a, a shot pretty much by accident, but managed to run with it, but I I just thought we had enough time to run it to half past, not the match, but they were going to let the time run over that match, and I even had to address Steve actually being on my team, which I've managed to keep a secret this whole time. He's actually been there since the match against Little Gigantes, Colt Victoire, and I've never once drawn attention to that fact on purpose. Right, Axel, get over there. We're gonna fire up. Oh, I passed to Jude instead. Well, I'm gonna have to run with it anyway. If I'm gonna score at any point, 
I've got to use the type advantage somehow. I don't get same type attack bonus, but Big Bang is just strong. Gonna have to but Well, God Hand is a ground move, so actually he's got the advantage over this in hindsight. I just thought it might work. Yeah? And it's not gonna, because he's using his strongest move. Go on, go in somehow. Oh, he did! Yes! I'm popping off! But again, you know, I had to fire up to make that happen, so I am not getting another goal at any point in this match. So, once again, now that hope has been reinstilled, I've got to play defensively, man. I'm not going for another goal. I've got to use special tactics as well. Like, I don't need my special tactics to get the ball up the field. I've got the win already. I need to use my special tactics to take the ball whenever it's necessary. Well, try and use my actual special moves first. The, the, wow, when I covered Forest team in Let's Play in Azuma 11 2, it was great because I loved showing off that team, but they weren't hard. Oh, he's passed to me and I've given it straight back. Special tactics now. <laughs> they, they've broken the defense. If they use their special tactic on me, that could be a problem. Katana, oh, they're not going to try and respond. I guess they must not have any because they had no reason not to try and counterattack. And funnily enough, now I'm going to get to take a goal with Axel. Well, it's a shot with Axel. Full on grand fire. Katanaccio counter is wonderful. It takes the ball off your opponent and then passes the ball to your striker right near the goal. Only, like... The little Gigantes' special move, Circular Drive, does the same thing but better. Am I going to get another goal on what was actually an even stronger move than Proxy on net, I think? Triple Defense. I remember back when Alias Academy moves like Proxy on net used to have half the TP consumption of all the other moves, yet the same strength. That is not the case anymore. Any Alias Academy type move uses a full amount of TP, as you probably figured out through the use of Jordan and Xavier throughout the story. But Xavier is not pulling his weight at the moment. He can't seem to uh, get the ball. I'm going to have to use Catanaccio counter again at this rate, and I, I can't afford a third one. So full on pressure. I want that second match. And I, uh, whoa, uh, <laughs> the, the special tactics button was greyed out. So. I'm very relieved that Scylla caught up and managed to do the flattening with Planet Shield. Do I have any long shots left? Caleb Stonewall, let's just... He didn't have enough TP when I hit the S button, so he just launched the ball across the field. He only had seven. Come on, there's not much time left. I... This is all I need to say. Wow, that nice size similarity. They picked a good duo to cover this there. Can I really not afford a single other special tactic? Come on, shoot! Only shooting stars make the most. If, if I have any good editors in the comments, I am waiting to see Steve as a shooting stars meme. He just does that move, flies off the corner of the screen, and then through space he goes. But wow! I actually beat the Forest team. This video would have been lame if it was only one match, so we are gonna advance. I should have got you to make predictions at the start, but nonetheless, Advanced Epsilon has beaten the Genesis. What a strange change in story. <laughs> wow, Davalin deserves to be on Inazuma National now. And if we can do that, then waiting for us in the final would be Alias B, an assortment of Alias teams. Or the Robot Guards, who I would rather fight because they're not in this game at all. That would be something unique. I mean, I guess the actual alien forms aren't in this either. But nonetheless, Dvalin, especially Advanced Dvalin and Advanced Zell, are some of the toughest goalkeepers you could ask to overcome. And when they've got unlimited TP, oh boy. Level 67, that's not so bad. Level 63 for Zeke Valanche. His best move is Drill Smash and Burnout. Not too bad. You may notice that all of these aliens now, apart from Dvalin, well, we know his name is Dave Quagmire, but all of these guys now have real English names. 
because they didn't have one in the last game because you were supposed to believe that they were aliens, but now we see that Crypto, for example, is called Karen Ripton, and the, the, the wife, the space waifu is called Carrie McCuring. So we're going to give this a good go. This is going to be even tougher than the Forest team, but if I did manage a 3-1 win in the end, that shows that Axel can score even without the use of firing up just by being a legend, but getting into that position in the first place is going to be a bit hardcore. It's, it's a little jarring that the background for this match is the Okinawan camp, as in Mary Times Junior High, but this is indeed where you play against Advanced Absol Epsilon in the last game, so it had to be here. It's just a little weird. And they're going to kick the ball right out of grounds. Scylla and Steve both failed to catch it. And now that I've ad actually addressed Steve, I'm probably kicking him off the team. Let's be honest. My joke got spoiled when he actually revealed himself. So heat tackle's not going to be enough to beat heavy metal. I, I like having heat tackle on Axel because it suits him. And it's a low TP move that allows him to use his then extremely heavy TP move Grand Fire afterwards, but it's gonna be fairly useless in a situation like this. I could go for a long shot and just try to cheese it out like we did against Hurley, did with Hurley Kane before. You know, we're having the exact same encounter again, heavy metal, we're not gonna get past that. So I need to work on my pass work. I, I am too reluctant to use a special tactic to actually dribble the ball up the field though because I know that I need those to steal the ball in a moment of danger. That to me is more important. So I've got to keep the Catenaccio counters in reserve. Then again, I, I was only allowed one use of Catenaccio counter in the whole of the last match so maybe I should be using something that's slightly less consumptive. Now, apparently, Jordan is just an excellent defender. Asteroid Boil Belt has pretty much never failed in this episode, whereas everything else has had a good crack at failing. Now, they might be able to use shot blocking on this, so I'm not going to fire up, but I'm still going to use my strongest move available. Don't care if it's a long shot. It's still stronger if you actually use it at close range. I need Grand Fire to go in if I'm to have a chance of winning this tournament. The shot blocking failed. Drill Smasher has a type advantage, that's the best thing he could have gone with. It's even version 2, but we beat it! But we're not going to be able to beat it with Axel again, unless I cheat and use a healing item. Axel's pretty much out of the picture, and indeed I'm even going to substitute him off. I mean, it, given how under-leveled I am, it would be fair to use a healing item, but I'm just going to try and roll with this lead instead. That seems like the, the, the right thing to do, you know? But I'm getting into the same habit as before. I'm not using my defensive moves to steal the ball from them. And then they might sneak in a late goal when it's too late. I've got another 10 minutes yet. It kind of triggers me. Asteroid Belt's beating Triple Dash now. How high leveled is Jordan? He is invincible. I guess it makes sense from a story perspective. Because he had the rivalry with Dave Quagmire at the start of the game. He was determined to show that despite coming from a lower rank alias team, he was deserving of being on Inazuma National, and so I guess it's nice that he's beating up Advanced Epsilon. But I don't understand why this is going in and the rest are not. So, it's a choice again between Emperor Penguin number three and Big Bang. Big Bang ever so slightly stronger. Emperor Penguin number three actually does not have the same type of attack bonus for Jude. That's a bit of a problem. But I'm going to use Big Bang again just because Zell is a fire type. If he goes with Drill Smasher, then I've made the wrong guess. This is the most analytical commentary I have ever given while playing in Azuma 11. I hope you enjoy it because this is me actually being tense in a match. Yeah, I made the right call and we're going to get a goal because Emperor Penguin number three would have had the disadvantage against Burnout, and we are going to put that ball in the back of the net, but this is far from over. We are going to go into the second half, and we've got to defend this lead if we want to stand a chance in the final. It's 30 minutes. How close to the goal are they? I, ca I actually can't risk it. 
it seems like such a waste of TP, but even just getting her to use Meteor Shell means she's going to run out of time. I did not want that to happen again like it did against the Forest team. Half time. That is a relief, and I've got all my special tactics. I want to make this three matches in one episode. I'm ever so slightly uncomfortable using Xavier as my striker because he's kind of the opposite of Jordan. He had a point to prove and so his, his moves were just invincible here in this match. But Xavier is kind of the opposite. He's the one who outranks Epsilon so he might let the side down. And indeed, in all of the extra competition route matches I've been doing against high level teams, Xavier has been failing to score goals. His kickstat is only two points higher than that of Jude. Is this enough? No, Asteroid Belt is just the MVP move of this whole episode. What I was saying before when I said I was a little triggered, I was trying to say that I'm triggered that I have to use it so much because it's already fully leveled up and I, I don't like to use moves that have already followed up. I am not allowing them to use a special tactic. TP's 131 can actually counter takes 55, so I can use it more than once in a match. It was just other circumstances preventing it. So this is going to give me a shot opportunity, but with Archer Hawkins, let's just try and dribble up the field and pass back to Xavier. Not that Xavier has been getting any goals for me lately, but I have to try it because uh, Archer Hawkins, he's only got hawk shot which is better than nothing but still not much and then breakthrough is never going to really do anything but hey i'm at the other end of the field i don't need another goal i just need to stop them from getting theirs so if i can hold out the time that's fine and then this is going to just be the longest episode of the whole series because we might actually get a tournament final out of this can we even claim the reward? It would be such an anti-climax now if I'd made it all the way to the end and then failed. But, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm genuinely having fun. This is entertaining me way more than I expected for an episode which I did not even plan to record. This was all Shadow AK's idea. And then I got a particularly funny comment when I, when I asked two episodes ago. I said, do, do you want this tournament mode? We got another goal, that's awesome. And he says, do we want tournament match mode? Yes, when did we want it? Yesterday. And so I, I just couldn't ignore that. Let's finally give Adam Montaigne his spotlight. I love having him as a striker, but I don't imagine him being the most useful here. His kickstart I think is in the low 50s. Now, these guys using having unlimited TP is um, is no stranger to them, actually. They're going to get a foul this time. I think Advanced Epsilon always had unlimited TP. Not sure about the Forest team. I, I, they might have. But we could, why is this being so much easier than the Forest team? It's, I get that you play Forest team much later in, in a Zoom 11-2 than you do this team, but... Story-wise, Advanced Epsilon should be a little tougher. Now I'm really praying we get Robot Guards instead of Ep Ep Alias B. Because not only is it a unique team to show off. See this about Xavier shooting? Oh no, that was Montaigne. Sorry, but either way, that's kind of why I didn't have too much faith in him. He gets to take the ball though, so fair enough. No, he doesn't. But um, yeah, I'm guessing that the robot guards are probably a slightly lower level than a team of alias all-stars. So that's just what I've got to hope for. Mercury is just on the case again. And I'm, I'm not going to... We've already seen Ambush once this episode. I don't need to show it up again. I've got, got to put in everything I've got with Sigma Zone. To go for the, a surprising A rank win. Not that these matches are ranked, but it's it's always a nice spiritual thing. And I don't know how I was even able to tap on the goal in the first place. It's not even on the screen, but luckily that counted, and we're gonna go with Shadow Ray and try to blast it directly through the face of heavy metal. Oh no, has he run out? No, they've got unlimited TP. He can't run out of it. But either way, with a 3-0 scoreline this... 4-0 scoreline this late into the match, 
This is well and truly sewn up. Why was this so much easier? And there's only one minute left, so please give me the robot guards. I want to see them again. They, they had a, a decent thumbnail in the last one. Go on then, use your special tactic just to see what... There are 30 minutes left on the clock and you use fast forward to make those eight seconds go by just a little bit faster. That was the most redundant use of fast forward I have ever seen in my whole life. And we're gonna qu- Scylla has learned Gigant Wall. That's a goalkeeping move, so he's got no use for it whatsoever. Come on, robot guards! Yes! Yes, it is, and they're level 43! Look at the top screen. The absolute toughest team in the whole thing was Forest Team at the very beginning, level 70. And somehow, a team of level 43 robot guards has beaten a level 60 team, alias B. This shouldn't be as tough at all. I am going to try my best to win by a wide point margin for... A tournament which had difficulty going in the wrong order. Oh no, I have Mark on the on the pitch. That's not a good idea. These guys still don't get bios. They are still the same thing they always were. But hey, it's robots. They weren't going to be in this LP until I had this suggestion. So here they are. Hope you enjoy. Hope I win. And they, they, can't, they can't even catch up to Adam Montaigne, they're that slow. So we're going to open with a shot straight away. Gaia Break was actually the shooting move of Epsilon, along with Gungnir. So interesting that we would use that now. Is Adam Montaigne strong enough to get the goal? It's always God Hand in this tournament. Why is it got? Why is it so appearing so much? And we're just going to pierce through it. This guy is no Cam Mando. Black Robot is the worst goalkeeper we've faced so far. Well, I d do I. Is there really any point in showing this match in full, to be honest? I don't think so. I'm going to go for one more goal and then I will try to avoid letting this episode go on for half an hour and we'll just meet you at the end of it because I think you get the point that I have fairly strong chances in this match. We're going to go with Emperor Penguin number 3, and if I can get 2-0 up, then I'm going to meet you at the next significant event, which may well be the end of the match. What is that reward going to be, though? Because it's clearly... It's probably going to be an Alias Academy-themed move manual. But which one would it be? We've already got Space Penguin after that weird side quest in the last episode. But that's it, I'm 2-0 up, so I am going to take the time to complete this match and I will see you in a little bit. What a final, eh? Well, that was ridiculously easy, 7-0. Also interesting to note that Robot Guards was the only team in this whole tournament to not have unlimited TP. Once I ran out the goalkeeper, he didn't even have any substitutes, so it was, it was free shots all around. And that was the weirdly easy path to victory at the end. So we're going to get Prima Donna and Wild Claw. Why did I get a better reward for beating the one in part 10? Wild Claw and Prima Donna are not the best. And so I will not be doing the Prominence Cup again in a hurry. But the achievement was not... The reward, it was the fact that I beat it. And also, yes, I should mention that tournament match mode is held in two locations. The original one was in the Football Frontier Stadium back in Japan and the other is here in Titanic Stadium. So that was a real reason to do this video, right? Right? <laughs>